Good morning, Impact Church! Ayan, excited na ba kayong magbigay papuri sa ating Panginoon? Amen! So I invite everyone to please stand up. Ayan, I also encourage you to feel comfortable na, um, na magbigay ng papuri. Uh, I want you to feel comfortable as you praise God. Just um, think of this moment na um, kayo lang dalawa. This is your moment with Him. I encourage everyone to connect with Him and um, just feel His presence, feel this place. I invite everyone to close their eyes and bow their heads and just feel the presence of the Lord.
we share that love and that grace to everyone around us father we thank you lord for this moment we thank you lord god for this connection that we have with you we thank you for for you we thank you lord for the goodness that is you 
Your love never failed us, Father. And we pray that the love that we will give to others will never fail. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. amen. You can now all sit down. Good morning, Impact Church! Ayan, and good morning din sa mga kasama natin na nonood online, especially ang ating mga kapatid sa ating Impact Church Kogyo. Good morning po sa inyo and hopefully na-enjoy nyo po ang ating sabay-sabay na pag-awit ng papuri at pagsamba sa ating Panginoon. And for today, we would like to welcome those na first time umatend ng ating Sunday service. So, unahin natin yung nasa Kogyo. Grabe, sa Impact Church Kogyo, laging merong first time and ang sipag po talaga nilang mag-invite. So, i-welcome po natin si Ate Rosela Taborite. Good morning po, Ate, and we're so happy na kasama po namin kayo virtually na nagpupuri sa ating Panginoon. And of course, dito din po sa Impact Church Cubao, kasama po natin ngayon si Nell Jason Brodet at si Marieta Daligdig. Good morning po and welcome to Impact Church. And of course, gusto din po nating batiin ang mga magse-celebrate ng birthday. Simulan po natin today ang napaka-cute na anak ni Pastor ni Pastor Jero at ni Nanay Becca, si Saver James Cruz. Ngayon po ang kanyang birthday. Happy happy birthday, Savi. And on March 24, si Sophie Bangkil. Happy happy birthday, Sophie. And on March 25, ang napakatalinong si Renel Art Barceta. Happy, happy birthday, Art! And praise the Lord dahil sa lahat po ng ministry na ating nagawa this past week. So, una na po dyan ng Youth Fellowship. Kitang-kita naman po kung gaano karaming kabataan ang matend ng Youth Fellowship last Sunday. And of course, every Friday po ang ating Region Fridays. Patuloy pong lumalago ang ating mga kabataang uma-attend dito sa ating Region Fridays. And, Noong Friday din po ang ating Uplift Worship Night. And of course, kahapon po ang Malasakit Ministry sa Cubao Center at sa Kogyo Center. At kung makikita nyo po sa picture dito po sa Cubao Center, hindi lang po ang mga nanay ang uma-attend, pati po ang mga anak nila kasama po nilang uma-attend at natututo ng salita ng Diyos. And praise the Lord dahil napakarami po nating volunteers na tumutulong po sa ating mga ministry. So for our announcements po, on March 19, ngayon po yan, ang mga hindi pa po officially member ng Impact Church, meron po kayong membership class after the worship service. So interested po kayo na maging official na member ng ating simbahan, umaten po tayo ng ating membership class. And after the membership class, ang Shepherds Meeting. So mga ka-Shepherds, Huwag po tayong umuwi dahil may meeting po tayo after ng ating membership class. And on March 26, ang ating small group training right after the worship service. And of course, on March 21, se March 31, sorry, 7 p.m. ang ating upper room. So please take note of the dates para po sabay-sabay po tayong manalangin sa ating Panginoon. And of course, on April 2, ito ang ating everybody's birthday! Ayan! Meron pa po tayong dalawang linggo para mag-ready. Kasi ba diba po ang lahat po ng ibibigay natin dito sa everybody's birthday ay mapupunta po para sa susunod na batch ng ating malasakit ministry. So that's all for our announcements. Ito pa po pala, sorry. Uh, meron po tayong piggy bank dito. Ayan, ito po ang ating piggy bank. Ito po ay para sa ating family camp para po tayo ay sabay-sabay na mag-ipon at mag-ready for our family camp. So, 
if gusto nyo pong magkaroon itong piggy bank, uh, humingi lang po tayo kay Kuya Ryan mamaya right after the service. So, magkano po ba ang kailangan nating ipunin para sa registration fee? So, for 13 years old and up, full payment po tayo, 1,900 pesos. Pero po, kung ang mga anak at ang mga kabataan ay may edad na 8 to 12 years old, half payment po tayo. So, kalahati lang po ng 1,900 kung age 8 to 12 years old. Pag below 8 years old, libre po ang inyong mga anak. So, kung gusto pong makakuha nito, hingi lang po kay Kuya Ryan right after the service. Okay? So, for those na member ng Malasakit Ministry, adult and kids, maximum of four persons po, 500 pesos per head. At kung mag-exceed po ng four persons, regular full payment po. Okay? So, that's all for our announcements. So, as we worship God through giving His tithes and offerings, let us, uh, let us first read what is written in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 8. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he had decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under, under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. So Impact Church, let us now give God Stats and all our offerings. Good morning. Good to see you again. Napaka-energetic nung ating leader, no? Baka hindi ko masasabayan yun. Um, thank God that I have this <clears throat> opportunity again to share the Word of God with you. Pero bago po ang lahat, meron akong sasabihin. Kaya lang, parang mahirap sabihin, ano? Ako ay magpapaalam na. Natutuwa kayo, no? Magpapaalam na si Pastor John. <laughs> Sabi ko na nga ba, eh, marami, marami matutuwa na magpapaalam na ako. Yeah. Kasi palagi naman talaga kaming wala dito. No? The past several months, we were busy and thank God merong opportunity like this na I can share with you the Word of God. So natawa kayo kasi fake news ano. Kung totoo kaya yung paalam ni Pastor Jero, ano kaya nangyari last Sunday? Magiiyakan, no? Sa akin natuwa kayo eh. 
Pero kay Pastor Jero, talagang alam ko, mag-iiyakan marami, no? Kasi naging parte na si Pastor Jero ng buhay ninyo. Okay. Nung narinig ninyo, nagpaalam siya, may gusto ng umiyak, eh. No? May mga nagre-react na, eh. We were there last Sunday. Meron ng mga nagre-react, no? Mapapansin mo sa mukha, no? Beginning to feel sad. Siguro yung iba, umpisa nang nag-worry. May mga tanong, bakit siya alis? Ano mangyari sa amin? No? Buti na lang, hindi totoo. <laughs> Pero alam nyo, in the case of Jesus Christ, when He said, I am going, I am leaving. Totoo yun. Totoo yun. No? And you can just imagine kung ano yung naramdaman ng mga disciples at that time. When Jesus started telling them that in a little while I will be arrested and eventually will be crucified. Mabigat yun para sa mga disciples, hindi ba? But anyway, uh, napakaganda ng message ni Pastor Jero last Sunday, ano? And my message today is, I think, just a continuation of the message na meron si Pastor Jero noong Sunday. I hope ma-sustain ko rin yung momentum, ano? Kasi ang ganda ng message na yun. Kapag may nagpapaalam or may mga pagbabago na mangyari sa buhay natin at hindi natin alam kung ano yon or kung alam man natin pero alam natin yung pagbabago na yon ay magbabago din yung buhay natin Nasa siyak tayo, di ba? And habang anaantay natin yung mga magbabago at alam natin na magkaroon ng impact sa buhay natin, we agonize no? yung anticipation of something that will happen, something bad especially that will happen. We agonize. We hope sana hindi mangyari. We hope sana hindi totoo. And just to think about it, kahit hindi pa nangyayari, does not feel okay. Di ba? Ayaw ko ng ganitong feeling. Mabigat sa pakiramdam. Parang every day of your life, you're robbed of the joy. Because you're thinking that, you know, mayroong pagbabago na mangyari, alam ko magbabago yung takbo ng buhay ko. I don't know if you're familiar with the word or phrase, winds of change. Winds of change. Itong winds of change, ito yung forces or mga pangyayari that have the power to change things. Used generally to mean change is going to happen. Talagang mangyayari. Okay. At itong mga mangyayari na ito, karamihan, di natin alam kung ano at kailan. Kaya rin siya tinawag na winds of change kasi yung wind, unpredictable. Di mo alam kung saan pupunta. Sometimes sa east, sometimes sa west, south, north, pakakyat, pababa. 
Minsan sudden lang yung chains. Minsan gentle siya. Pero may mga times na you know, ma- malakas. Winds of change. An event or series of events that signals or triggers large and important changes. Winds of change. At literal din natin nararanasan itong winds of change ano, lately. No? From Habagat to Amihan. No? A few days ago, medyo malamig-lamig pa. No? But I think started the other day. No? It's beginning to be hot. No? Ramdam ba ninyo yon? Unless nakatira kayo sa Baguio or Tagaytay. Ganon pa rin siguro ang climate doon. Ano? Masarap, malamig. Pero dito sa Metro Manila, ramdam na natin yung sudden change of the, you know, the atmosphere. Literally from cold to hot weather. Some winds are gentle, others are harsh. And the past years, we've experienced major changes, actually. Okay. Major changes, you know. From normal to pandemic, from peace to war, maring hindi kayo updated sa mga nangyayari globally, pero in every passing day, nagwo-worsen yung situations in other countries. between Russia and Ukraine, between U.S. and China. It's worsening. And it's very alarming. From health to sickness, from success to failure, from good to bad. Some changes are gradual, others are sudden or drastic. Yung gradual, at least nakakapag-prepare ka pa. Pero paano yung sudden na change? Some are for the better, but others are for the worst. Sana lahat na mga changes are for better. Kaya lang hindi lahat eh. In fact, mas maraming changes na parang lalo nagpapalala sa sitwasyon ng buhay natin. Some changes are within, but many others are between. Some changes are local, while others are global. But whether it is local or global, we are affected. Change or winds of change. Another phrase is the word change is constant. Are you familiar with this term? Change is constant. In fact, sabi ng mga experts, change is the only constant in life. Change is the only constant in life. Meaning, Change is continuous. Hindi pwedeng pareha lang sa dati. Hindi mangyayari yung ganun. Kahit yung edad natin, nagbabago. Hindi pwedeng pigilin yung change. It naturally occurs. Wala tayong control. Sabi ng isang author, every step we take is a step, one step towards the grave. So change is constant, continuous, 
endless, relentless, persistent. Merong mangyayari palagi. Merong pagbabago na mangyari. So hindi ka dapat pakampante. Hindi man mangyari sa atin, pero may mangyari sa kasamahan natin, sa mga mahal natin sa buhay. You know, we, we want to welcome change. But how will we do it if it turns our joy into sorrow? Katulad ng mga nangyari sa mga disciples. Gusto man nilang i-welcome yung change, pero change will really happen. And it's turning their joy into sorrow. Because at the time, they were already enjoying the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And suddenly, they will hear Jesus saying, I'm going. And you know what? If we look at these changes in the light of the scripture, specifically of the second coming, it's hard to expect or hope for change that would make life better. Bakit? Kasi sabi sa scriptures, you know, there will be rumors of wars. As, we, as the day is drawing near of the second coming of Christ, the Bible is warning us, don't expect that you know, it will become better. In fact, palala ng palala yung mga mangyayari. And these changes, particularly the negative ones, have the potential to fill our eyes with tears. Not tears of joy, but tears of sorrow. These changes, the negative ones, may overwhelm us with strong, negative, paralyzing emotions. Fear, anxiety, sadness. It will bring us down. It will erode our faith or crush our hope, makes us wonder and ask the why questions. Katulad ng mga prophets sa Old Testaments. Why is this happening? Why are you allowing these things to happen? I thought Christian life is, you know, a, you know, a walk in the park. Or I thought Christian life is like lying on a bed of roses. You know, life is always in transition because of these changes. And along the way, we can be lost in that transition. And so, in anticipation of the many changes that will surely happen, we need to know what we need to do. Kailangan alam natin so that we can prepare ourselves. We need to be ready or else the wind of change might sweep us away. Mawawala tayo sa landas. Mawawalan tayo ng direksyon. 
mawawalan tayo ng pag-asa, masisira yung buhay natin, ma-overwhelm tayo sa nangyayari and it will affect us personally. So my proposition this morning is this. We need to know where we are anchored upon. We need to be reminded kung kanino tayo nakasandal at saan tayo huhugot ng lakas para anuman ang mangyari tayo ay you know tayo ay patuloy natatayo at maglalakad we need to be firm we need to be grounded on a solid ground we need to have this firm foundation so that whatever will happen Ano man yung mga pagbabago na mangyari sa buhay ay patuloy tayong nakatayo. In John chapter 15:9 to 17 9 to 17 Sabi dito as the father has loved me so I have loved you Abide in my love If you keep my commandments you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I choose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Today's text comes from the time after Jesus was the feet of the disciples and before he is handed over to the authorities for crucifixion. So napaka-crucial na moment ito sa life ni Jesus, sa history ng Christianity. Sensing and knowing the imminent change and in this case, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, the disciples began to feel anxious. Some were confused, perplexed, and again, the feeling is not really okay. Ang feeling na parang orphan na sila. That's how, you know, experts describe the feeling that they had before. Yung parang orphan na sila. And they were starting to grieve. Hindi pa nga nangyari, you know, news pa lang. 
Hindi pa nangyari, hindi pa aktual na nangyayari, pero they were already grieving. And Jesus knows that He needs to prepare the disciples for this scary thing. Nakakatakot. Kasi they're not just talking about Him leaving and go to another place. Magbabakasyon lang or magtransfer lang ng residence. They're talking about Him, you know, dying. Mawawala na siya. So napaka scary na sitwasyon meron sila. And lessons from previous chapters have been part of Jesus preparing His disciples. Katulad nung sa John chapter 10, He began to present Himself as the Good Shepherd. I am the Good Shepherd. And you know, alam ninyo kung ano yung role ng shepherd, ano? To protect, to provide, okay? to, to be present sa buhay ng mga sheep. Presence, protect, provide. Yun yung role. So when Jesus presented himself as the good shepherd, alam ng mga disciples yun na, you know, present siya, they will be protected, and they will be provided for whatever they need. That's in John chapter 10. In John chapter 12, he predicts his death. Doon pa lang sa chapter 12, sabi na niya, I am going to die. But at the same time, he introduced himself as light of the world. So when we say death, it's really darkness. But he said, I'm the light of the world. And in John chapter 13, he predicts Peter's betrayal. But you know, he affirmed his love for Peter. Yes, I will die and you will be the instrument of my death because you will betray me. But don't worry, I love you anyway. I still love you. What an assurance. And in John chapter 14, very obvious yung sinasabi doon na they were worried, they were anxious, they were confused. But Jesus in that particular chapter comforts them by telling them that I am going but I have to prepare a place for you in heaven. And there he mentioned the word mansion. Okay. And at the end of chapter 14, he mentioned about the Holy Spirit who will be your comforter. Yes, I'm going to go, but I will leave behind you the Holy Spirit who will be your guide and who will be your comforter. And then in chapter 15, he mentioned the vine and the branches. He is the vine and we are the branches. So this is Jesus' way of preparing them. And in John chapter 15, particularly verse 9, He said, Abide in my love. Abide in my love. There are two important words that I want to expound and highlight this morning. And these two words are, first, the word love, and second, the word abide, abide. In verse 9, it says there, the Father, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Several times in this particular passage, the word love is mentioned. In the same way that many times in that passage, the word abide is mentioned. Kaya gusto kong mag-focus dito sa dalawang words kasi 
ang principle as far as the Bible is concerned, when a particular word is being mentioned several times or repetition, ang ibig sabihin napaka-importante nito. Nakailang malaman natin kung ano ibig sabihin nito. So I will focus on these two words, love and abide. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Dito pa lang, we understand the nature of love. Ano nga ba itong word na love? We understand the nature of love and how love flows from the Father to the Son and to us. In other words, this passage is telling us that love originates from God. It's from His own heart. And from that love, we receive. And we are now able to share that love with others. So if we know that God loves us so much, and that love is sacrificial, unconditional, and eternal, then it feels good to know that we are loved. Makes us feel secure. I am loved by God. So that in whatever situation I am in, I know that He loves me and I know that this love is unconditional. Even if I sin against God, you know, that love will still remain. In other words, in whatever situation we are in, if we know that we are loved by God, it addresses our feelings of fear and anxiety. From feeling unstable to become stable, knowing that, you know, we have this love, I have this love from God. In verse 10, it says, if you keep my commandments, and you know what the commandments that Jesus is referring to? He's referring to the greatest commandment specifically. What's the greatest commandment? The greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is not just about any other commandments. This is not even referring to the command to go and make disciples. Because the command to go and make disciples happened later. After his death and before his resurrection, that's where he made that command to make disciples. So in this particular passage, he was referring to the greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God. So if we keep the commandments, ibig sabihin noon, we abide in His love. What he's saying is that stick to that love. Stay in that love. Because no matter what will happen, if you stick to that, if you obey that, if you love me with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, whatever's going to happen around you, it will not make you worry. It will not make you anxious about the situation. If we keep the commandment, we abide in His love. And if we keep the commandment, 
it brings a feeling of complete joy. Because we know that we are truly loved. We're not doubting. So it gives us that feeling of complete joy. And in verse 12, it says, This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Here he summarized the second greatest commandment. What's the second greatest commandment? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. The first greatest commandment is love the Lord your God. And the second greatest commandment is love others. So this is what Jesus is saying, if you keep my commandments, if you are keeping that, if you are obeying that, if you are in my love, If you are in my love, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Yes, I'm going. I will be gone. But if you are in my love, if you know that I truly loved you, hindi ka matitinag. Ano man yung mangyari. And then he goes on to give them a larger context for this love, and it is friendship. In verse 15, it says, I do not call you servants any longer, because servants does not know what the master's doing, but I call you friends. So there is another dimension in this relationship that we have with God. We're not only his sons and he's our father. We're not only servants and he's the master, but we're also friends. We're also friends. That's another important dimension in our relationship with God. We're friends with God. We are his friends. God's our friend. You're standing where I am standing. And when you are in the midst of trouble, you can be sure that I will be with you because he said here that the friend's willing to offer his life for a friend I will be with you and then verse 16 says you did not choose me but I choose you wow this is a powerful verse because it describes who we are it describes our position in Christ it gives us a deep assurance of our sure position in Christ we are chosen we were chosen by God Sarap sa pakiramdam, di ba? Nas pinili tayo ng Panginoon. So basically, Jesus is telling the disciples, 
this is my love. This is the kind of love that I have for you. This is how I loved you. And this is how you should love others. I want to know this kind of love that I have for you. Because if you understand how I've loved you, you will begin to feel okay. You will begin to feel okay. And you will begin to understand why I'm going away. First John chapter 3, verse 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, uh, we should be called children of God. Mayroong kanta nito, di ba? Children's song. No? Pero napaka deep yung theological meaning nitong phrase na ito. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we may be called the sons of God. So, God's love is unconditional. And that's the kind of love that we have received. Unconditional. Magkakasala tayo, magkakamali tayo, nandyan pa rin yung love na yan. It's being offered to us by God every day, every moment. Ano man yung pinagdadaanan natin sa buhay, nandyan yung unconditional love. Para God is saying, in whatever situation you have in life, I want you to know that I still love you. It will not change. God's love is sacrificial. He's willing to offer anything for our own good, for our own sake. Sacrificial. And this love is eternal. This love satisfies us, gives us joy. And this love binds us together. Not only with Him, but with one another. Unites us. In other words, whatever will happen, we're still together. We're still together. God is still with us and we can still be together. There's a poem entitled, The Love of God. And it says, When hoary time shall pass away, and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall, when men who here refuse to pray on rocks and hills and mountains call, God's love so sure shall still endure. O love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forever endure the saints and angels' song. Knowing and experiencing this love will make us steadfast, will make us strong as we face life's changes and challenges.
The second word is the word abide. Abide is a word mentioned several times in the Gospel of John. In fact, in the first 11 verses of John chapter 15 alone, you will find the word abide 11 times. So parang in every verse, the word abide is mentioned. Ibig sabihin, napaka-importante. Pabalik-balik, paulit-ulit na sinasabi yung word na abide. So yung repetition reminds us of its importance. The word abide is an English word, no? an old English word actually, for the word remain. Remain in my love. Or stay steady. Steady ka lang. Keep your position. Keep your position. Yes, I'm going. But if you know that I loved you, and you can avoid in that love, hindi ka matitinag. The other meaning of the word abide is rest. So rest in the fact that I love you. Rest in the fact that you are connected with me. That we have this relationship. Rest in the fact that yeah, maybe I'm going to go physically but you're still in my heart. And my love for you has no barrier, no boundary. So here, Jesus invites his disciples to abide in his love. Okay. From chapter 10 to chapter 15, especially the first part. Jesus talking about what he is doing for them. But this particular phrase, abide in me, it's God telling them, you have to do your part. Abide in my love. Abide in my love. I'm doing my part. I've done it already, actually. All you have to do is stay, remain. All you have to do is know and stay and remain. Because if you will do so, It will make you feel safe and secure. It will give you the assurance that, you know, it's gonna be okay. Trust me. It's gonna be okay. In the book of John, this word abide is often used to indicate more than just the simple act of resting. Because to abide is to make a comfortable home. Home. You remember the song, Love Will Be Our Home? 
I think kinanta ito ng Cruz family, ano? sina Pastor Jero and Becca and the kids no? noong February. Love will be our home. Love will be our home. Parang ganito yun, ano? yung invitation ni Jesus Christ. Abide in my love. What he's saying is, make this love your home. Home. Okay? Feel at home in my love. In this book, the book of John, particularly in verse or chapter 14, Jesus spoke of God as having many mansions for God's people. Sabi niya, I'm going to prepare a place for you. For where I am, there you may be also. Preparing a mansion in heaven. And the word mansion here is translated actually, not literally. Baka pagdating ninyo sa langit, sisihin ninyo ako, wala naman palang mansion dito ah. Niloko tayo ni pastor ah. It's not really literal. no. But the word mansion is translated as abiding places abiding places a place of rest kaya di ba pag namatay tayo yung lapida nakalagay doon rest in peace abiding places place where we have our rest So when Jesus said, abide in my love, he's saying that, be at home in my love. Because in my love, it's a place where you will begin to feel safe and secure and comfortable. Make it your home, sweet home. Home, sweet home. So when we talk about Jesus asking the disciples to abide in his love, he is asking them to make a home in my love, to find safety there and to rest in my love. Now you don't have to struggle. You don't have to be anxious. I want you to be calm. No. If you stay there. And that statement must have been a comfort for the disciples to know that although he will be gone, they still have a home, a place to rest, a place of safety. And that is if they are going to abide in his love. A place where they can feel secured in the face of impending chains. So that phrase, abide in my love, is like Jesus telling them, it's gonna be okay. Yes, I'm going away. Yes, I'm Tell, told you that you know this is what is going to happen. There will be changes. But it's gonna be okay. 
it's gonna be okay. You know, we are in a love relationship with God. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, He loved us first. We're not desperate lovers here. Na hinahabol natin yung love ng Panginoon. Because truth is, He first loved us. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 18 to 19, it says, God's love is this wide. Okay. That you will know the, you know, the, 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 the width, the length, the height, the, the depth of His love. In fact, it's beyond measure. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39, it says there, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. This love relationship guarantees us that no matter what happens, everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. So Jesus invites us to abide in His love, to live in His love, make it our home, enjoy it, feel safe and secure with it, to rest and even to heal, to recuperate, when you are stressed, when you are wounded, allow that love to heal you. Carl Menninger said, love cures people. Love cures the wounded. He invites us to draw from Him that love so that we can love others the same. When we are being blown by the winds of adversities, we abide in His love. When we encounter our enemies, we turn to the love of Jesus. And when we face challenges and threats, we abide in His love. When we are afraid to face the days ahead of us, abide in His love. Abide in His love. Let's bow our head and let's just close our eyes. and ponder upon this invitation of Jesus for us. He said, abide in my love. Abide in my love. Jesus is inviting you to abide in His love. If you are afraid of what tomorrow may bring, abide in His love now. Are you anxious? Are you confused? Are you disturbed? Are you hopeless? Are you in pain? Are you stressed? You're not sure of what will happen next. He's inviting you to abide in Him. Abide in Him. If you are going to respond to this invitation, accepting this invitation, if you are in a situation where you need to rest in Him, if you are accepting this invitation, I want you to stand to indicate that, Lord, I am 
accept your invitation. Would you like to stand to indicate that you are responding? Thank you very much. It looks like all of us, we need rest. We need rest. We need to experience that in Him we are safe, we are secured. That we are truly loved by our Heavenly Father. Let's sing this song. Abide with me. Let this be our prayer this morning that we will abide in Him. That we will respond to His invitation, abide in my love.
Jesus, Lord, that's our prayer. Abide in us. In fact, it's just our response because it's you who is actually inviting us. It's you who have already provided that relationship, that place where we can feel safe and secured, where we can rest. Thank you, Lord, that today you have prepared us for what lies ahead. We do not know what tomorrow may bring. There will be changes, and we're sure of that. Although we want positive changes, but we do not have control of these changes. But we can prepare ourselves today by abiding in your love. So thank you, Lord, for that love. Thank you for truly loving us despite our sins, our weaknesses, our disobedience. You have loved us first. Thank you for the assurance that nothing and no one can separate us from that love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Before I'll go, I'd like to leave you some of these practical questions that you can ponder upon and consider. How's your home? The literal home. Yung tahanan or your relationship sa pamilya? How's your marriage? Is it a place or a relationship where God's love is? Is it a place where it's easy for every member to stay, to abide? Is it a home, sweet home? Somebody said a home is a safe harbor in stormy times. Home is a haven where we flee to escape the press of life and find rest, companionship, and peace. So this is a challenge. Make our home, the literal home, a place of love, God's love, where every member finds rest and companionship. John Howard Payne said this, Amid pleasures and palaces, though we may room, be it ever so humble, there is no place like home. There is no place like home. I'd like to challenge the parents especially. Establish a home where God's love is. A home where everyone will have that experience of peace, rest, security, and safety. God bless you. stand up as we sing our last song.
will be a resting place of your love that our homes Lord will be a place Lord where your abound your love abounds so much that our homes father will be a place Lord that shows forth yung ever lasting love that you have for each one of us. It starts with us, Father. So allow us, Lord, in whatever situation, anuman po yung kinakaharap ng bawat isa ngayon dito na nakikinig sa amin, anuman po yung problema, anuman yung concern ng kanilang buhay, maramdaman po nila, Panginoon, ang iyong pagsama. Allow us, Father, to continually feel that our your abiding presence in us. And that, Lord, we will only cling to it. Na bawat problema na harapin namin, bawat concern, bawat ligaya, bawat sitwasyon na hinaharap namin, mararamdaman po namin, ang choice lang po namin is to abide in you and let that love, Lord, that in you abound in us as well. So therefore, Lord, we can go to the ends of the earth. Lord, I pray that your blessings be upon each one of us. I pray, Father, that in each one, Lord, we will feel your presence every day. And as we face, Lord, the challenges that we have, we know, Lord God, that you, the creators of the heavens and the earth, the mighty God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords is our friend. You are on our side and everything will be okay. Help us to cling on that faith and abide in that faith always, Lord God. Be glorified, be magnified. May the love, may you have the power together with all God's, all God's people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep the love of Christ and to know that this love surpasses knowledge and I pray that you will be filled beyond measure, beyond the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than you can ask or think according to the power that is work within us, to him be the glory in the church both now and forevermore. Amen.
Good morning.